And so the second category is sharing how Jesus's message of hope, freedom, and healing transformed you. So what are some ways that you've seen work or that you would suggest people share this part of their story? Totally. And I just maybe couch it with the word compassion. Uh, I was on a phone call with a donor and I kid you not, it was an hour and a half. At one point, I just considered putting myself on mute. I'm like, you don't need me to have this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> but an hour and a half later, he shared three words that have radically changed the way I think about this journey of becoming like Jesus in the way of our sexuality. And the three words were curiosity, compassion, and and courage. And I think those three words actually overlay really, really well. Of, can you be curious about the before? Can you be compassionate for the during as you're working this out? And then can you be courageous to go and partner with what Jesus is calling you to do? But regarding compassion, this ability to co-suffer, whether that's with yourself or with others, uh, my first question might catch a maybe our audience off guard a little bit. It's simply, how did you hear about pure desire? Uh, because it's not everybody in their dog that's walking around, you know, talking about the seven pillars and betrayal and beyond, or hey, like it was on the bulletin. Now there are churches and places like that, but for a lot of people, it was, I heard from a friend. It was, we were in crisis. I know we've used the analogy of our building before and the front door quite literally is crisis. The amount of people who are calling in the moment of pain and they've Google searched, I need Christian help regarding sexual addiction. And so then they land on our doorstep. And I think inviting people to go back to think, oh yeah, like it was actually in pain or crisis again, that moment of discovery that I then began the journey. Where did you begin is really important. And what was that first step? Because if you can understand your first step, you can then give that potentially away to others. So that's number one. Number two is just, were there specific mile markers on your journey? I'd love to share a story. So I jumped into counseling in 2020 and shout out to Jason Carstens. He's one of our peer desire clinicians. He's incredible. And I'm sitting in an office called the Hope Center in Plano, Texas, while working for Josh Vidal Ministry, which is underneath crew. And he looks at me and says, do you believe objective truth? And I'm like, Jason, I work for Josh McDowell. He's literally an apologist. He staked his whole life on objective truth that the Bible and the word of God is his words. And I said, I think if I like say no, he like materializes out of the wall and slaps me like, you Josh know, McDowell. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going to happen if I say no. Yeah. And so of course yeah. I say yes. And then Jason Carson's in a moment that I'll never forget, looked me in the eyes and says, no, you don't. He said, no, you don't. Not in the moment of temptation, you don't. He said, because in the moment of temptation, you bow to your feelings and you worship them as if they were God. And I had this kind of almost out of body experience, like Dr. Strange, you know, when he gets knocked out of his metaphysical body, he's, Great like, movie floating, reference. he's like floating behind him. And I'm like, who is this guy? He's a hypocrite. And then that, you know, reality crashes and boom, that's me. And that's a moment in my story that I'll never forget. When I saw the duplicity so clearly of I'm saying one thing but I'm doing another and my actions are indicating what I really believe because we act upon what we believe. So again, the second question is, are there mile markers in your story? Moments that you look back and say, something changed, something happened. And then the third question in this category that I think is really important is, what did that feel like? What was your experience? Mm -hmm. Again, how specific can you be? I think specificity, uh, however you say that word, mm -hmm. authenticity. Specificity. It's hard. Specificity. That's a hard word. <laughs> it's, yeah. And authenticity are really important in the journey because if we're broad and generic and say, I fell, I tripped, I stumbled, what does that and even mean? And now I'm mean? doing better. Yeah. And now Yay I'm doing me. better. Yeah. Let's right. name it. And, yeah. and again, not to glorify it, yeah. but that others might say, hey, me too. That's mm -hmm. a powerful yes. moment. Yeah, I love what you're saying about those mile markers or those kind of trademark moments, or I've, I call them a lot like the aha moments. It's it's asking of ourselves the question, like, where did I start to turn the corner? Like, where did I start to change? Because I think for so many of us, we have experienced the roller coaster uh, or the, you know, the, the wheel of just round and round the same thing, binge, purge, repeat, binge, purge, repeat. And, and that's, I think, common for people that have struggles, whether it's, again, porn or gambling or food or workaholism, like we do better for a while, things get rough, we're back where we started, we try harder. And so to, to have someone express like, this is where I began to break free. This is where God revealed something to me that I hadn't seen before or in a way I hadn't understood. And things really began to change. Um, what I think we might underscore is how significant that is to people that might still be stuck in some kind of roller coaster or binge purge cycle. Because when you're in it, there is a part of you that really believes this is the time. Like, this is the time. I'm going to try hard enough. The stars are aligned. I'll be free. 
But if they're honest with themselves, they're like, well, but I haven't really changed yet. What's going to make a difference? And then they hear your story and it's like, oh, that's different. I've not heard that before. I didn't, I don't really think I've heard someone going down that road. And so when you can share those pieces, even if it's not necessarily going to be what they experience, I think it does create a vision of, of hope of a future that can be different. And it's not just that someone tried hard enough that gosh darn it, they finally made it. I'm proud of them. It's like, no, you encountered God in a new way. You, you experienced his love and grace and strength and were able to apply it in your life in ways that actually you're creating some effective growth and change. That's what, what needs to be glorified. That's what needs to be brought out because it's not common. And when it does happen, I, I would hope that any one of us would hear something like that and, and re- realize, well, that's a reason to celebrate. Yeah. Like, man, look what God did in this life. Look what God did in my life. And then having a person believe, and that's what he can do in my life too. Yeah. And I think with this too, specifically, if you're talking to people who are Christians, which, you know, a lot of us grow up in a context, a culture where it's information equals transformation. If you just read your Bible, you'll become more like Jesus. And I think it's important in this aspect to share not just truths that you know are legit, but also experiences that reinforced it. I mean, for me, I remember the first time I shared my full disclosure, shared that one thing I was never going to share, that same sex experience I had when I was, you know, a, a young a young guy. And I remember the experience I had when two guys turned to me and said, me too. And I remember the shame like dripping off of me, completely falling off of me. And that, you know, to Nick, what you said at the top of the episode, like no one can argue that experience with me. No one can argue what I felt or what I experienced in that moment. But also that reinforces both sides of our brain that it's not just, I know this is true. It's, I know this is true. And I experienced something on a horizontal level in relationship with God's people that reinforce that reality. So I think that's an important piece in this is making sure that sharing experiences, things that actually happened to us, in us, around us, 